Today we're recreating a $300 steakhouse dinner. Sarah and I used to go to this place called Bavette's in downtown Chicago, and we would pay $300 for this dinner, which consisted of dry aged steak, a twice baked baked potato, and cream spinach. So one of the common side dishes that you'll find in a steakhouse is a loaded baked potato. And I used to love those. I get them all the time pre-keto. So I figure why not make this into a little cup that has some cauliflower mash and we'll top it with all the things you'd find on a regular baked potato. So in order to make our little cups that are gonna hold our cauliflower mash, I'm actually gonna be using this muffin tin and I'm going to be using the cheese. I cut these out using a little mason jar as the form, but you could use a cookie cutter. Hope that it will make a little cup out of it like that. <laughs> now we're just gonna cook regular cauliflower mash. So I've preheated our oven to 345 degrees and I'm gonna put these little circles of cheese into the oven and melt them down so that they become more pliable so that we can put them on top of our muffin tin. So it shouldn't take too long, probably only five to six minutes, but we're gonna keep an eye on it. In order to make our cauliflower mash, I'm gonna take a head of cauliflower and cut it up into little florets. I'm going to take some olive oil, garlic, salt and pepper. I'm gonna to toss it all together and put it in the oven at 425 for about 20 minutes, but it might take a little bit longer than that depending on how big your pieces are. You would like some brown little charred bits because that's what's gonna give it all that flavor. Okay, so we tried to actually put the little cheese rounds on top of our muffin tin and we failed. They were way too small and so we've searched the house and we've tried a bunch of different options for um, the shape uh, that we want to achieve but we couldn't find much um, but we did find this vase. And we think that this is actually the size that we're gonna need. We're not gonna have as many as we want, um, but I think we're still gonna accomplish the thing that we were going for, which was little cups of mashed cauliflower. So um, we're gonna be using this to cut our rounds with. Here are all the failed. Make a tasty chip though. Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna be saving this cheese for something else. I think I can just blend it up and we can use it as regular Parmesan cheese, so. Nothing goes to waste. So I'm gonna continue cutting out my shapes and then we'll show you them after they've been in the oven. It's been about three minutes and it's a little earlier than we did last time just because we think it was cooked too, far too long the last time we did it. So we're gonna take it out early and try to put them on top of our mold. Oh my God, it almost, it fell, almost fell off, okay. okay. Here goes nothing. Be very careful when you're doing this because it's hot. That definitely worked better than the last time. So now we are going to put them back into the oven so that the cheese can melt a little bit more and it can start crisping up. Just for a couple minutes. After these cups are done, we're going to go ahead and make our cauliflower mash. So it's been a couple minutes, so let's check on our cups. They definitely needed to be bigger in order to fit and drape on top of the muffin tin. I'm actually gonna let these cool on the tin. We won't be using them until later when we're actually gonna be filling them up. Okay, so here we have our roasted cauliflower that was in the oven for about 20 minutes at 425. We're just gonna put this in our blender and we're gonna mix a few other things in there and it's gonna become a beautiful cauliflower mash puree. So we're just gonna be eyeballing this, but um, you can add a bunch of different things into your cauliflower mash. So we're gonna be adding in some better than bouillon chicken stock paste with a little bit of water into our cauliflower mash just to flavor it a little bit. We're going to blend it up and then we'll start adding in a few other things. I'm going to be adding some garlic powder, some salt. Can I put the salt in this little hole? I don't. Um, we're going to be adding in some heavy whip just to make it um, have a smooth silky consistency. So we're going to be adding in about two ounces of cream cheese in here and then we're going to pulse it until it's smooth. All right so it's done we're just going to transfer it to this bowl and I'm going to add in some bacon bits and then we're going to fill our cups. So the next dish that we're gonna be adding to our steakhouse menu, if you will, is a cream spinach. I used to love cream spinach. It's luxurious and creamy, and it's the perfect side dish for a beautiful dry aged steak. So I diced a half an onion and put it into my pot and sauteed it with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. And we're gonna be adding in our spinach, 
to let that saute and it will probably reduce down by like more than half. If not, there will probably be like two pieces of spinach left because that's how spinach works. You have like a bunch of spinach and then you have like a handful left. So our spinach has reduced down greatly. There's like hardly anything left and we're ready to put in the rest of our ingredients. I'm gonna go in with some of this everything flavor god seasoning. We love this stuff. We add it to everything. I'm just gonna sprinkle some in, just eyeballing it. I'm gonna be adding in half a tablespoon of garlic powder, two ounces of cream cheese, and one fourth cup of heavy whipping cream. So now we're just gonna stir this and I'm gonna be putting it into a casserole dish so we can put it in the oven and bake it off so it's nice and golden brown. I will be topping it with some Parmesan cheese. So the main attraction of this meal is going to be the steak. When you go to a steakhouse and order a dry aged steak, it can cost like $100 a piece. But we decided to try it ourselves. So we got ourselves some dry aging bags off of Amazon. They're called Umai bags. And so basically you're gonna put your steak in the bag. You're gonna suck the air out of it. We used a vacuum sealer and you're gonna put it on a rack inside your refrigerator for a long time, like 45 days. So this is not a quick 30 minute meal, it's a 45 day meal, but I think it's gonna be worth it. The steaks that we're using um, are a rib eye roast that we bought from ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a humanely raised monthly meat subscription that we uh, added this on last month and it was about $100, but still, this is gonna make some four decently sized steaks and that's about a fourth of the cost that you would pay if you went downtown to say Bavette's in Chicago, which is a really high class, really expensive steakhouse. The thing about dry aging is that it doesn't look pretty when it's coming out of the refrigerator after being in there for 45 days. Let's unveil this thing and I'll show you what it looks like. First, the, the steak, okay. Here it, here it is. Definitely looks like something that you would dig up next to a woolly mammoth or something. And he here she is. Um, so you'll see here that there's a shell that has formed or grown or not, not grown, formed on the top of the meat. And we call this, not we call it, people call it the pellicle, which is also not too yummy sounding. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to cut away at this pellicle to get to the delicious dry aged goodness on the inside. So we're gonna do that now. How about how thick, how, I've never done this before, my husband has. How thick is it? But half an inch? Like a centimeter. A centimeter, really? Looks more to, than a centimeter to me. Two centimeters, okay, so there, there is meat inside here, right? I mean, it looks like bacon. You see that? That's what you wanna cook, right? The pellicle is strong with this one. Um, just gonna keep on cutting away till I get something that looks edible here. Is there meat in here? Cause I'm getting nervous. Someone's excited. So we're gonna do the reverse sear method to cook this rib eye roast, okay? And that means that we're going to be heating up our oven to 250 degrees. We're going to put this piece of meat on a wire rack and we're gonna put it in there for like 12 to 15 minutes. It's going to evenly cook the steak and then we're gonna finish it in a cast iron pan and serve it table side cut. So we're gonna liberally salt and pepper this. On the pan into the oven for 12 to 15 minutes. So we have about two minutes left on our timer and we've been preheating our cast iron pan. I'm gonna be cooking it for four or five minutes on each side, I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Um, we're gonna cook it with avocado oil. Avocado oil has a really high smoke point. Four or five minutes and then we'll flip it and then we'll let it rest. Just relax, ease into the steak. We're too far into the video to <laughs> fail. Ease into the steak, ease into it. You get so stressed out when it comes to the steak. 
<laughs> Become one with the steak. Would you? Get away from me. <laughs> Thing behind the ears. What? No one does this. You can't reach there. Let me get you a little bit. So there you have it, the ultimate keto steakhouse dinner. We have the delicious prime rib roast that we dry aged for 45 days, a cauliflower mash cup, which is like a twice baked potato with sour cream, bacon bits, and scallions on top, or green onions. And we have creamy, delectable cream spinach. And this video took a long time to make, so. Cheers. Should I try the food or what? Let's try the steak. It's really, really good. It's like if steak times steak, or steak ate another steak. It's like steak squared, very beefy. We'll leave the links to the dry aging bag in case you guys wanna try it at home. And if you'd like to see more videos from us, you can click on one of the videos on the screen and we'll see you over there. Anyway, I'm Emily from the Kato Twins, signing out.